All right, what's going on everybody? Cryptix here, and we have a lot to talk about here, so no BS, no introductions. Basically, I'm going to be talking about Dear Girl or Dear Lady first because I haven't addressed her on the channel yet, and a lot of you guys have been asking me about her. Yes, I know all about the story, okay? And then I want to follow up that story with how Pokimane legitimately went against Twitch's terms of service. And no, believe it or not, it has nothing to do with, uh, let's just call it her Poke Hub incident, okay? And how this action alone already deserves a ban. So, you know, how do these two stories even correlate? Why am I combining them in one video? Well, they align for one purpose and one purpose only, to dig the rest of Twitch's grave. Twitch already had a bad reputation to begin with. But the results of both of these stories are really going to piss you off and also show you Twitch's true colors here, okay? Do I want Twitch to fail? No, but they clearly lack leadership and they lack communication and just, you know, a sense of touch with the rest of their community, okay? And I'm going to call it out. So let's talk about Dear Girl first. She's known by Ferociously Steph. That's what her Twitch username is, all right? So how did she get famous? Well, I think we need to rewind the clock back a little bit because Twitch has always been known for, you know, their double standards, uh, you know, how they basically protect the top echelon of Twitch e-girls. And the reason for this is simple. They get a cut of the Twitch e-girls revenue. And, you know, if there's Twitch e-girls making thousands of dollars and then they get banned for 72 hours or whatever it is, Twitch is going to lose out on revenue. That's basically the long story short. But, you know, Alinity decided to flash her entire stream one day and this resulted in her getting some type of 24-hour ban it was so pathetic if any other twitch streamer did that they would be perma banned or banned for months or maybe even a year i don't know how the bans work but it would be way worse than what alinity got but then you know people started to catch on and call this out 100 percent and then you know within 72 hours after the incident Twitch decided to reveal their Twitch Safety Advisory Council, okay? Sounds very, very official, but quite frankly, it's not, and you'll know why in just about a second, but, you know, there were a lot of legit people on this, and there still are legit people on this actual council. It's supposed to have some type of say with, you know, if people get banned or unbanned or get permabanned or suspended, right? Essentially, there were doctors on this, there still are, um, Twitch gamers, legitimate ones at that, but then also there was this transgender, you know, Twitch streamer by the name of Ferociously Steph, and she still, I believe, is on the actual council. I don't know why I keep saying were, but I think it's because of the result of this whole story, right? But essentially, she was the first transgender, apparently, on the Twitch website. I don't know if that's true or not, but she was the first open one, all right? So, with that being said, I want to just kind of break down a little bit of what she's about because some of you are already going to get confused based off of this, okay? So let me know if there's like a biologist to comment down below how this is even possible because I'm a little confused here, but basically it was a male. Uh, ferociously, ferociously Steph was a male, uh, has turned into a female and claimed female, okay, which I guess is possible um, in today's society, and then she decided to also claim part deer, but not a female deer, a male deer because she's got antlers on herself while she streams, and then she eats grass, and then also apparently from time to time has deer gasms. All right, so if there's a biologist, let me know how that's possible, you know, with the whole human biome, right? So with that being said, she really had a problem and still has a problem with uh, communication, uh, voice communication, because apparently it gives away your ethnicity and minors and minorities don't want to, you know, have their race revealed if they're uh, talking on the mic. But I'm going to just completely debunk this entire thing. If you're good at a game, you need to communicate, okay? I don't care what type of race you are. I don't care if you're a square or a circle. If you are good at the game, you know, talk to me, okay? I want to know if there's an enemy in front of me. I know I want to know if there's an enemy behind me to my left, to my right. Just let me know. Like, I don't care what ethnicity you are. To not have voice chat, to not have people give up their linguistic profiles. I mean, and maybe you maybe you think, you know, if, if you are a competitive gamer, which a lot of people have been like, Steph, you're not, a, you don't, you clearly know nothing about competitive play. Well, competition, by the way, y'all, competition requires you to get every advantage possible. To become one, the top 0.01% in any video game, you have to, you have to get squeeze every amount of, of advantage you can possibly get. 
So I don't know why she even thinks that to begin with. That was basically her first, I would say, strike in the internet community. People called her out for this, but then she went on stream after she was basically on this Twitch safety advisory council, after she was announced to be on it. And there's some really concerning statements of her really abusing her power or, you know, claiming that she will abuse her power because, you know, people should be afraid of her. Uh, she has power now. In fact, I'm just going to let her kind of tell you firsthand. Roll the tape. I'm not going anywhere. I have power. They can't take it away from me. And honestly, there, there are some people that should be afraid of me because I, I represent moderation and diversity and I'm gonna come for hurtful harmful people if you're a really shitty person i'm gonna stand up against you period and uh twitch is endorsing me to do that so so as you guys can see this is quite a character we have on our hands okay not only is she annoyed about voice communication and wants it banned altogether in esports which is never going to happen okay i don't care like i said if you're a square or a circle if you're gonna tell me very important information while we are playing together i want you to tell me i don't care what ethnicity you are okay so with that being said she also you know claim to have power, claims to have power, and that people should be afraid of her. Now, the implications of this are that she was assuming or insinuating that, you know, she was going to ban certain people that had a problem with her, which is just not, you know, that's just something that completely goes against Twitch's morals, I would say, in general, even though they have double standards, okay? They never have banned somebody else for simply having an issue or, you know, just... I wouldn't even say an issue disagreeing with other people, okay? Because there has been people that have been banned for harassing quote unquote Alinity and, you know, other streamers such as Amaranth. Those people have definitely gotten banned. So I can't even say that Twitch has never banned people that have had a problem with others. But disagreeing is simply, you know, something that Twitch I don't think has ever done in terms of banning people, okay? But this girl claims that she would ban people because she has power now, okay? So th this was a pretty big story that kind of erupted. And then Twitch, you know, basically had to come out with this statement. All right, so I'm going to leave the statement up on the screen. I'm going to kind of read and you can follow along. So they said, we said in our blog post, we were looking for the council to advise on a variety of things from advising to new policies to promoting healthy streaming habits. But we could have been clearer about the task the council will not be involved with. Council members will not make moderation decisions, nor will they have any access to details on specific moderation cases. They are not Twitch employees, and they do not speak on Twitch's behalf. While we value their opinions and their right to share them, they are independent actors who will have opinions that aren't shared either by Twitch, Twitch employees, or even by other members of the council. Nevertheless, we believe that having diverse viewpoints will make the council and its recommendations stronger and ultimately better for our community. Now. This was released by Twitch, but I just have to ask a quick question, Twitch. Why would you value or even put someone on the actual council that doesn't value voice chat? One of the most valuable assets in team communication when playing online, whether it's playing a competitive esport, you need to have communication if you're willing to succeed, okay? And, you know, not to give uh, this girl, you know, any crap, any more crap than she already gets, but I'm pretty sure there must have been other transgender Twitch streamers out there that had similar viewpoints as her in terms of, you know, having diverse groups and being inclusive of everybody, but also valuing voice communication, also, you know, valuing competitive play and not really claiming this big blanket statement that I haven't even gotten to yet, but... You know, there are other Twitch streamers out there that I'm sure are transgender and would have been, I would say, more valuable to the council than this girl. But the biggest thing that really just grinds my gears is the fact that Twitch decided to throw this girl on and not even get her off of the council yet based off of this blanket statement that she has about um, gamers and how apparently the majority of them are white supremacists. Roll the tape. Sis, you can be white. Someone thinks I'm like super like racist against white people. No, I just, I'm just not cool with white supremacy, y'all. It's really not that, I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. This is the biggest thing that really makes me concerned the most. And the fact that she's not off the council yet 
is also just a slap in the face to the entire community. The majority of people that watch Twitch, even though I say, you know, oh, they're, they're mostly just chatting and stuff like that, a lot of the Twitch platform are still gamers at the end of the day. And the fact that someone is representing, at least to a certain degree, Twitch, even though the Twitch claim they don't represent, they're on the council, okay? The fact that there's someone on the council that believes that most gamers are white supremacists really just shows me that Twitch doesn't care about the people that are on this actual council. This was simply a PR move to kind of get rid of the hate that Twitch gets for their double standards and just simply not enforcing their terms of service, okay? This was just a stunt. This was simply a way to get less hate. And quite frankly, it has now amplified that hate, at least for myself, tenfold for this platform. Twitch does not deserve any type of positive feedback for this action. It was simply a way to get, oh, well, we have people on this council and, you know, even though they're not actual Twitch employees and they don't actually represent Twitch at all, we, we will only want them on the council because maybe they'll give us some feedback. They don't actually have any real say in moderation cases. And they don't have any details in moderation cases. We just want to know their opinions about stuff. Like, how stupid is that, guys? Like, just, just, like, give me some feedback in the comments. Now, this isn't the only statement they had. They also follow up this statement with another one. And it's actually pretty crazy, like, the fact that this entire thing doesn't really have any effect on any type of action, all right? So the next follow-up was at the heart of the Safety Advisory Council and all of our work at Twitch is the desire to foster a safe, inclusive, and creative community of passionate people. As with every community, there will be disagreements and differing points of view, and we are committed to considering a diversity of perspective as we work to help keep our community safe and healthy. So like I said, there could have been another transgender Twitch streamer on the, on the council that would have been a little bit better in terms of not putting blanket statements on the entire gaming community, calling them white supremacists or, you know, trying to ban voice communication, one of the most valuable things you can have in team play. There are other people out there that Twitch could have grabbed and they just decided to pick the bad apple in the entire basket. Now, this isn't the only thing Twitch has done wrong over the past couple of weeks, guys. Like I said, Pokimane has gone against Twitch's terms of service, okay? Now, if you guys don't know the story, I broke it down on my previous video. Basically, a YouTuber by the name of It's a Gundam decided to make fun of Pokimane simps. And there were some simps out there, even though it's probably a joke, there were some simps that had, you know, uh, tweets and stuff like that that said, oh, I just went homeless, Pokimane, respond to me, please. You know, I just used my last $400. I'm going to sleep in a Starbucks now or in the back of a Starbucks. Basically, I think it was a joke, but I'm sure there are simps out there that give more money to Pokimane than what their income really has to, to give to them in terms of, you know, giving themselves some type of quality of life. Like they might be sacrificing a quality of their life to give money to this Twitch streamer Pokimane, okay? So Gundam decided to make fun of the simps for that. And then Pokimane, of course, she wants to protect her simps at all costs because those are the, you know, top 75% of what her revenue is every year, right? She actually decided to go on to the video, live stream this, okay? On the video of It's a Gundam's thing, okay? Shame the sponsor that was on the video that Gundam made about making fun of Pokimane Sims. And not only that, right? But also, you know, disliked the video and said, I just can't believe this guy, guys, so mean. And th that essentially is weaponizing a group to dislike the video, okay? If I, you know, went on my main channel and I live streamed me hopping onto another person's video and just saying, guys, this, this guy is just mean, you know, he's harassing and bullying me and I dislike the video, I'm sure a good majority or a good portion of the audience of my live stream would also go to dislike the video. That's just creating a mob mentality and raiding a channel with malicious intent, which is literally a portion of the harassment, zero tolerance, mind you, harassment policy of Twitch. This is basically, you know, not allowed at all. It's on the harassment page on Twitch. 
and it says, and I quote what I just said, browsing or raiding channels with malicious intent. And the reason that it is definitely enforced cross-platform, okay, is because other streamers have been banned off of the platform for hopping onto YouTube or hopping onto another platform and harassing or calling out someone else on that platform, okay? The fact that Pokimane decided to dislike the video, okay, and say, oh guys, this person's harassing me and complaining and bitching and moaning like that, that is going to result in weaponizing a group of people to dislike Gundam's video. That's essentially what is going against Twitch's terms of service. And that is legitimate, just, you know, that just deserves a ban, okay? It 100% does. And both of these stories really show you guys that Twitch really doesn't have any sense of leadership, they lack communication, and they still have a double standard for Twitch streamers such as Pokimane. They're not going to ban her at all. They're not going to even ban her for her Pokehub incident. They already issued her a warning. She's not getting banned, guys. She probably will never get banned unless she pops a, you know, I'm not even gonna say it. She flashes her stream like Alinity did, okay? So at the end of the day, you know, this is the result of two stories of, you know, just showing Twitch's true colors, showing that they simply have not learned a damn thing and that simply this platform is going to die out eventually. There's going to be exclusivity deals. There's going to be other Twitch streamers that move to other platforms because, you know, Mixer's offering money. Uh, Spotify is even offering money for people that just have like just chatting uh, videos and, you know, they can convert their video file to an audio file. There's so much opportunity now out there and there's so much more competitiveness out in terms of the social media realm and you know how exclusivity deals are being a thing this is going to cause other people to leave twitch eventually okay i'm not going to say it's happening tomorrow but eventually this is what's going to happen if twitch doesn't get their crap together i hope you all did enjoy this video don't forget to drop a like if you guys are new to the channel hit that sub button and that bell i'm cryptics not putting deer antlers on myself not eating grass not calling you guys white supremacists and definitely not going against Twitch's terms of service by, you know, raiding channels with malicious intent and signing off.